Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody whose ex has the audacity to maybe be happy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, before, fuck that person. <laughs> yeah, right. How could they? But before we I begin, I fucking totally relate to that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. Absolutely. We are not professionals. We are not trained in this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings. So hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs on the incredibly rewarding, but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right, everyone, we are going to get into our letter because it's a good one. So this letter comes from reinfected wound, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing from my haunted house of a brain, which is just a really pleasant metaphor. <laughs> Hi, Sam and Sierra. I am a dedicated listener of a couple years and credit the pod for getting me through the hardest times of my life so far. I went through a terrible breakup about two years ago that I consider to have given me a new lease on life, which is cool, but also inflicted some terrible wounds that just won't seem to heal. Mm. I was with my now ex for six years. We lived together, did everything together, etc. which as you know, isn't to say it was a good relationship. It wasn't. It kind of wasn't. My entire existence was dedicated to ensuring my boyfriend, he, him would not leave me and was happy with me at all times. I found out about the term codependency in the wake of my breakup, LOL. So you can imagine the utter shock and terror I felt when one day my boyfriend told me that he wanted to break up completely out of the blue with no warning Mm. signs detected by my paranoid self. My entire Mm. world and sense of safety was completely shattered. I still don't know why exactly he chose to break up, but some of the the complaints lodged were I had no hobbies, was, quote, too normal and didn't share every interest with him. (laughs) What? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, those are doozies. Uh, Okay. I know now, thanks to JBU, that people can choose to end relationships anytime and for any reason. But the way in which my ex went about dumping me seemed particularly cruel. I won't be able to get into all the deets in one letter, but really still haunts me to this day. Just two weeks after the big day, he met a much younger than him student, flew her out to our shared home while I was away trying to survive at my parents' home. He would later tell me we shared a house together and it was hard (laughs) to permanently leave right away after the breakup. He would tell me about how much sex they had and how interesting she was, especially compared to me, a quote, normal person with a nine to five job and no exhilarating hobbies to speak of. <laughs> I know it's just We're, like, it's so just rough. Trash. <laughs> it's so rough. During their shared week together at our house, they did all the things my ex and I would do. Go to the grocery stores we shopped at and the make the meals that <laughs> we would me make you, together. Most romantic thing ever. <laughs> People love going to the grocery store together. Uh, it's a nightmare and I don't understand why. <laughs> I couldn't begin to describe the kind of pain I felt while learning this from him. The person that I had spent years with and had just told me that he loved me merely weeks ago. I interpreted this all as one massive upgrade for him, which made me feel like the most enormous, most boring piece of shit in the entire universe. Imagine finding your replacement's hairs in the shower of the house you were paying for while going through this. It was a literal nightmare. A couple years removed from the shit show, I am a new, more defined person and have a better understanding of what I want from a relationship and what behavior I will no longer tolerate within one. But the problem is I am still so deeply haunted by this specific part of the breakup. It embarrasses me how deeply hurt I still feel by this memory. For example, I blocked my ex on every platform available, but just a couple months ago, I was able to find out via Spotify, LOL, that he was still with the girl. That fucking triggered me, guys, like in a day ruining kind of way. I have recurring nightmares of my ex talking to me about how great she is at least three times a month. I can be going about my day and randomly think of their now long term relationship and have my whole nervous system be completely triggered. It's intense and heavy to carry around. I feel this wound ached even while listening to JBU letters about people starting to date right after Mm -hmm. relationships end Mm -hmm. and how that isn't a bad thing. I can't help but wonder why I go back to this memory so often and why it hasn't softened in its intensity despite not actually feeling jealous of their relationship. 
I feel so much healthier and happier now than I ever was with him and feel to my core that I would never ever want to be with him again, but I just can't seem to help lessen the burden of one, this memory, and two, how I imagine their relationship might be like now, especially since some explicit comparisons between myself and her were drawn out by my ex. How can I heal this oozing wound and become unbothered knowing that they could actually be happy together despite how poorly <laughs> he treated me throughout and after the relationship? After I moved out and while he had and the girl were starting their relationship, he started stalking and harassing me, a scary behavior that he continued for a year after the breakup. Sometimes I feel the need to con- collect and analyze this evidence to conclude that their relationship must be bad because of patterns like this. But after finding out that they're still together, my mind can't help but think of him being so much happier with this upgraded, hotter, and more interesting version of a girlfriend. While I'm still single and trying my best to evolve into a healthier version of myself, I constantly feel the need to seek validation that his behavior was hurtful, even toxic, and that I'm not just overreacting and being immature. And yes, I am kind of- Let me validate that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, just you wait. (laughs) (laughs) And yes, I- Happily, we'll, we'll oblige that. <laughs> we will definitely validate. <laughs> and yes, I am kind of seeking validation even now with this letter. <laughs> Sorry. But like, I just don't want to care about this anymore because it has no bearing on my life and is so tiresome to think about. I just want to feel at peace, but I don't know how to give it to myself. Any musings, tough love, or anything in between on how I can just patch this nasty wound up would be so welcome. Thank you all so much for the gift that is Just Break Up. P.S. You can block people on Spotify now, which is great. Good to know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my darling, my darling, reinfected wound. Thank you so much for writing and trusting us with this letter. I cannot wait to validate you and dive in. But first, we're going to take a quick break. All right, everyone, welcome back. Like we promised, we are going to validate the shit out of you (laughs) right now. (laughs) Because let me tell you. (laughs) We have thoughtful, mature things to say. And... Also, I think we just want to talk about the audacity of this person. (laughs) No, the audacity, right? I sort of made a joke about like the audacity of this person being happy, but like the shit that this person did is just so awful. This (laughs) week's second topic from the first episode of the week (laughs) was about how to break up like respectfully. This is a great example of how not to do that. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. We should have paired those two together. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, Let me just like, let me just like say the things, the things that are like really absurd about how this, this, this child handled this breakup with you, which is that like one inviting this, another person two weeks after this breakup into your, your home, (laughs) your, your home, that that, he, it, that you are paying for to have a week of sexcapades is bad enough. Like that's, that's like, okay, that's shitty behavior. But then to <laughs> layer on the telling you about what happened in that week yeah. of sex and making active comparisons. Do people have no shame? Like, <laughs> like I'd be no so ashamed. Shame. This is just uh, mortifying. Uh, and then on top of that, to then like harass and stalk you, even though he broke up with you and was telling you about how this other person is like an upgraded version of you is just like, this behavior is like, I, something is happening there. And I don't want to diagnose someone with any sort of thing, but I'm like, I, I cannot believe that this person thinks that this behavior is in any way acceptable. I, yeah. Like on what planet it like, it's just yeah. horrifying. And the what this person thing, put you through. Like, who tell us, Sam, <laughs> We keep getting letters from uh, people who identify as female who are like, my boyfriend is telling me that they want to break up with me because I don't have enough hobbies. And my theory about this is that actually these people have hobbies, but that these like sexist men don't see their hobbies as like somehow valid enough. Like it's because like, Oh cool. You're not like brewing an IPA in your basement. Therefore you don't have a hobby. Like it's like, Oh, reading books is like somehow like not a thing, but like definitely me playing like 
pick up basketball with my bros is a hobby that like is worth something. Sorry. <laughs> That's exactly what Spencer <laughs> does like weekly. <laughs> He's uh, in a league though, so oh, and that's with great. his like long term friends from high school. It's very cute. Sorry, also like Spence you can play pickup games. Blast. Yes, yes. <laughs> Spencer it's, would it's also not tell us. Invalidating other people's <laughs> yes, lives. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Spencer would not be like, oh, your hobby of like cross stitching is somehow like not a hobby or whatever. Just like, <sighs> okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Anyway, um, I think we. We, you know, it's been a long time since we took the low road and just <laughs> trashed the uh, letter writer's X. But I think we wanted to do this particularly so that you could see the of course here. Of course, mm -hmm. this is an incredibly wounding thing that unfortunately will still wound you long after you have sure. intellectualized it, healed from it, accepted it. Like this is, you know, of course you, of course this turned into a wound. He wielded his happiness against you mm -hmm. and then like rubbed your face in it and made it somehow a comparison between you and this person, which is just wildly unnecessary and arguably cruel, you know, Absolutely. that Absolutely. would wound me too. This, this is like some middle school level, harassment, you know, or like it, yep. it gets under your skin. So of course this is going to create a wound, you know? Yeah. And I think even beyond like it getting under your skin, like this is traumatic, right? Like yes. the worst thing that you could have thought possible happened to you. The thing that you were putting mm -hmm. so much life and time and energy into preventing happened mm -hmm. to you. And then the worst fears that you have about yourself, the things that he had been telling you over and over again, were a hundred percent validated by right. the behavior, right. by the things that he was telling you. And then he continued to harass and stalk you, which is like deeply right. triggering, deeply unsafe. So like, this isn't just a like, Oh, I had a bad breakup situation like this. The way that this went down is, is traumatic, right? Like it is cruel for and sure. The, and the way that you're responding to it, at least to me in my own experience of trauma feels like a a trauma response like that right. that feeling that you're having around like I just want people to understand how big a deal this is I want to be validated in how much space this thing is taking up in my life yes. I so so deeply relate and sat on my therapist's couch for weeks and weeks and kept telling him like I just want people to know how much this is still bothering me, that this is yes. the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And people just don't seem to understand or see it. And I, and I, yes. I so deeply relate to that because I understand that feeling of like, how can people continue to be like living their lives when the worst thing that I ever thought could happen to me happened to me and mm -hmm. it hasn't been fixed. No one's fixed it. It still happened. Yes. And it's, there's, there's no way out of it. It is so big. It is taking up so much space in my everyday interactions with people. Yes. And you know what I've been thinking a lot about as I accept the impending forward march of time and the inevitable death of everyone I love. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, keeping it light this episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> keeping it tight and loose. Okay. Anyway, uh, I am chill. I am a chill woman. You always uh, have been. You always have been. <laughs> I want that on my tombstone, just so you know. <laughs> when I die, I want you to charge into the lawyers meeting because I'm by then I'm going to be rich and it, there will be an estate. And I want to I want you to say her wishes were her tombstone just reads chill wo woman always was always will be. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm into it. I'm into it. So I've been thinking a lot about you know life and the and the guaranteed hurt that we are all, we will all experience because life is temporary and and you know bad things happen to everybody to it's it's guaranteed anyway you know it reminds me of my anxiety this letter reminds me of my anxiety in that like the audacity of the fact that we can be hurt and shaped by things we never wanted that we don't connect to mm. that. We don't, that we don't want to carry around. Like yep. it feels definitively unfair yep. that you are 
hurt by this thing and still hurting by this thing that you don't even want to think of, that you don't even relate to, that isn't your wound, right? (laughs) It's your wound, but you didn't cause it, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's something so unfair that these life lessons that we have, that we are forced to not like non-consensually carry around things that happen to us and we have to be shaped by them. Like that is just, it's just unfair, you know? Absolutely. And what I've been working with in my anxiety is like the most said thing by parents across the world. (laughs) Life isn't fair. (laughs) <laughs> you know, but they sure. fucking mean that shit. It's not, they're not talking about you not being able to stay up for another hour. They're talking about <laughs> the fact that things, bad things will happen to everyone Yep. and everyone will have to carry and reckon with grief and loss and harm. And we will have to find a way despite all of that, for sure. in spite of it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, I know the feeling of being like, this thing is the thing that is going to define me for forever. Right. And, and what I want to say is that like really doing the work around the trauma that I experienced in partnership with a therapist helped me right size the trauma that I had experienced in a way that makes me remember that this was a big thing that happened to me. It is not the only thing that has happened to me. Right. And, and I, I deeply understand the way that you feel like I have to carry this around with me. I have to like hold this burden. I'm so tired of it. I don't want it impacting me anymore. And I want to say that like, It will always be with you, but there are things that you can do in partnership with a therapist that can help you realize or like see it not as like this giant boulder that you're carrying around, but like one of the many things that are sort of packed in your backpack with you that are, that are coming along with you wherever you go, but that feel so much more supported because they feel much more like integrated into your understanding of the world. So All of this to say, like, I just want to validate the shit out of the fact that like the reaction that you're having to this is not outrageous. It is not outsized. It seems very natural to me that this is the way that your heart and brain would make sense of this really, really horrible thing that happened to you. And I want to say that there are ways that you can find to make this thing less of this giant thing you're carrying around and more of like a chapter in the story that you can tell about yourself that helps you understand your own understanding of the world. Yes. And I want to speak to you about these feelings of embarrassment. It's mm. also very understandable that you're feeling embarrassed of it, but I want to sit with that feeling a little because like, you know, to me, embarrassment is telling me that there is a bigger emotion hiding behind it. You know, I saw in an interview recently, Alok Vedmenin said that anger is a gatekeeper for sadness. And I thought that was so, so good, especially because I think there are so many emotions that are gatekeepers for other feelings, you know, Mm -hmm. for example, like embarrassment, you know, how do we, how do we dethrone this? How do we soften this? As you say in your letter, well, you know, why are you embarrassed? What does it feel like when you feel that embarrassment? Mm -hmm. Is it because you're afraid of the things that he said? You're afraid that they're true. You know, you're Mm -hmm. afraid that they're revealing something about you to other people that he would leave you in this way, that he would say these things, that he's still happy, the audacity of his happiness, you know, um, what is that embarrassment gatekeeping? Cause there's some vulnerability behind there. And so I want to nurture that. I want to nurture what's behind the, I mean, I want to nurture the embarrassment too and say like, there's no shame in being left. There's no shame in being dumped and other people's poor behavior towards you is not a reflection of you Mm -hmm. and your, you know, you earning that behavior in some cosmic or tangible way, it is a reflection of them. And also all of us, all of this have been treated poorly and that's, and so there's no shame in that. And Mm -hmm. also, you know, just because 
he's still with this person doesn't mean the hurtful things he said are true. Mm. Just because he said, you know, you know, the, your fear that she's like this more exciting upgrade, you know, they're, they're not related. Their, mm. their relationship is not of you. It's not from you. It's, it didn't rise out of the corpse of your other relationship, you know, right. They're in a separate planet, right. And you and your worth and your worthiness and the sanctity of the relationship that you had before are on another one. You know, mm -hmm. this is a perfect opportunity to remind ourselves that just because we feel something doesn't mean it's true. That even mm. though our feelings can be, re we, you know, we can find reinforcements for our feelings everywhere. Like, oh my God, they're still together. That must mean what he said is true. Oh my God, they're still together and I'm single. That must mean I'm, I'm not interesting. You know, yep. Yep. we, we love to find things that reinforce the worst thing we could ever think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. But again, let's take a deep breath. Let's remind ourselves just because we feel something doesn't mean it's true. There's not some cosmic pattern here. And I am interesting. The things he said to me are horrific and hurtful. So no wonder why I'm hurting. And I feel embarrassed because I'm afraid I feel embarrassed because someone I love treated me that way, but that is a reflection of their emotional growth and abilities and not my worthiness. You know, we're talking about hard, hard work here, but I think there's something behind this embarrassment. Do you know what I mean? Yep. For me, there's something, there's, there's something it's, it's for me, my number one emotion is shame. And it always comes back to me feeling like I'm afraid that I'm not good enough or I'm unlovable or that people are going to be mad at me. There's always this like childhood fear behind my shame and embarrassment. And I'm, I'm wondering what's behind what your embarrassment is gatekeeping right now. Yeah, no, I think that we use those types of relationship or those types of feelings like shame or anxiety or whatever it is as off ramps to prevent us from feeling big, scary emotions like sorrow right. or like fear or whatever it is. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity here for you to find out where those emotions are coming from, why you are off-roading or, you know, using that off-ramp to get off of those feelings. Um, and to, to, to find a way to tell a story about this situation that is more true to what actually happened, right? Not the story that you're telling yourself about like, he did this because I didn't love him enough mm. or he did this because she was so much better than me. But instead sort of telling, being able to tell the story in a way that's a reflection of all of the complication and nuance that went into this situation so that it, it it doesn't just become this horrible thing that defines your entire relation or your entire world and that you are going to always have to feel shame and embarrassment and fatigue around. Um, right. And that's, that's hard work. But I want to just say that like all of this feels really understandable to me. All of this situation sounds really horrible and I'm so sorry that you went through it and I have faith that you're going to be able to figure out how to, to hold this in a different way for yourself and to be able to, to feel some of those big feelings that you might be running away from using things like embarrassment or shame or self loathing or whatever it is that's keeping you from feeling how deeply hurtful the situation was. All right, my darling, uh, we love you so much. Let yourself be angry. Let yourself hurt. Let yourself feel all of those feelings. Um, and, you know, his happiness, the audacity of his happiness is not a reflection of a failing on your part. We love you so much. Thank you so much for writing. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you want more content from us, you can always subscribe to our Patreon. If you subscribe as a, at as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you could submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to follow, like, subscribe, leave us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, editing, producing all magical things from our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. And remember, 
sometimes to dethrone an uncomfortable emotion, to soften it, to help us along our healing journey. We need to make space for those feelings we don't like feeling. Invite them in, give them a seat at the table, ask them what feelings they are protecting you from and find out what is hiding underneath. You can sit with that discomfort and you can learn from it. And if all else fails, just break up. 